Hey guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insane to what it all means. Leading off the show today is John Campia. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie-related show on the planet Earth, coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank. I don't know where my camera is today. That, today it's there. Yesterday it was there. All right. Welcome here. Also your host of Collider Heroes, John Schnapp. Queen! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do your Jeremy Johns. I don't have a shirt that injured. Actually, I'm repping Legacy of Kane today, so that's good. Not that, That's go. quite the... Uh, I don't have a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do your Perry Nemiroff. I got nothing to rep for you today, but I'm glad, glad we have a more crowded desk today. It's a good thing I'm a teen tiny person and teen not tiny overcrowding person. it too much. <laughs> I'll see your Mark Ellis. It's like the baby on Schnepp shirt is trying to reach for a delicious baby carrot, and it's just out of this range. <laughs> okay, now look, guys, before we get going on today's show, stop the presses. Uh, it's not in the sidebar here, but a pretty big thing I, I found out, I can't believe I missed it last night, but a brand new extended version of the Fifty Shades Darker trailer oh, apparently dropped last night. Oh, shit. And no one can give us analysis on this like our own <laughs> Ashley Mova. So Ashley, what oh. did you think about that extended trailer? Okay, well, first of all, it showed after The Bachelor season premiere, so maybe I was just on a high, but I'm feeling <laughs> this extended trailer. It seems creepier than the first one, and I've talked to friends who read the book series, and this seems like it's the best book in the series. Granted, I hated the first movie, and I didn't read any of the books, so what do I know? But it looked pretty good to me. You know, you can tell Ashley is passionate about something when you ask her about something <laughs> earlier today at the table, and she begins before the first word comes out of her mouth, this happens. <laughs> and when that, you know she's, a, she's, she's amped about whatever she's about to talk about. So, all right, let's get on with the first official right. story of the day. According to a report from Disney's official fan club, D23, it has finally been confirmed that Benedict Cumberbatch's Doctor Strange character will appear in Marvel's studio's Thor Ragnarok. The fan club previewed the Taika Waititi <laughs> film in its 2017 <laughs> update this past weekend, where it was revealed by the following description. Thor Ragnarok in November brings together Thor, the Hulk, and Doctor Strange to face off against intergalactic baddies, both familiar and new. John, what do you think about Doctor Strange appearing in Thor Ragnarok? I think it's a good fit. I think he, you know, when you just watch Doctor Strange, and you and I just watched it again the yep. other night, actually. Uh, when you watch Doctor Strange, you realize he kind of fits in with the world of Asgard and, and that whole, you know, the galactic idea of it. We know which way the movie's going. And plus, minor, minor, minor after credits uh, spoiler alert here. If you saw the after credits of uh, of Doctor Strange, this is a no dub. Of course, this is happening. Schnapp, what do you think? Yes, especially. Uh, I think it's great. I can't wait to see uh, uh, Doctor Strange and Hulk interact. That'd be pretty <laughs> pretty weird. Mm -hmm. Brings back a little sweaty Defenders comic book knowledge. What's up, son? So yeah, I think it's great. I hope he's in it a little bit more than just like let me help find your dad and then that's it. I, I'd like him to actually maybe go to the you know Planet Hulk or whatever it's going to be called, Sklar, Skrar, whatever it's called. So. <laughs> Jeremy. Yeah, when I saw the after credit scene, I, I was like, they're either going to commit to using him in the third movie or it's going to be like that that thing where, oh, well, after Doctor Strange helped us with that one thing before this movie started, so I'm glad they're committing to it. I mean, it's a world where you have a titan, a god, and a mage, and this is the stuff that dreams are made of for mm. me, so I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Barry. Yeah, I'm on a Doctor Strange high right now because of the second and watch so many things that I had complained about and I loved it the first time but things that I was complaining about the first time nope they did it right they explained it well and it meant that much more to me the second time around I'm just curious to see how much of a role he plays I imagine it's gonna because you know we got that little card with the address on it I imagine they're gonna show up and he'll be like a small piece of the story but I don't really care I love Cumberbatch in that role yeah, I mean, Doctor Strange, he has got a lot better odds of appearing in Thor Ragnarok than Deadpool does in Logan. I think we can say <laughs> that. And the thing about Doctor Strange and Thor Ragnarok that's interesting to me is I, I like Doctor Strange as a movie, but I felt like he was very, very powerful. And when you put him in the MCU, how is that going to play out? Is he going to be so superior to everybody else that we've already met where it's not even going to be a problem for him to take care of another issue that our adventures have going forward? So I'm interested to see him come across something that might confound him and all of his incredible power a little bit that maybe Thor and Hulk can help him in something because Doctor Strange seems so omnipotent to me by the end of that movie that I want to see him come across a problem that he can't solve by himself. Um, you know, one interesting thing though is I think we all assume Doctor Strange would pop up in Thor because of that after credits scene. What is interesting about this comment from Disney though is that they're saying 
In Thor Ragnarok, we have Thor, Hulk, and Doctor Strange. It sounds like it is a significant right. role, mm -hmm. not just kind of like a side thing. It sounds like it's probably going to be more significant than maybe even Iron Man in the new Spider-Man movie. We'll keep our eyes open for that. All right, what's next? Disney and Lucasfilm have dominated the holiday box office now for two straight years, and it seems as if they will continue doing so in the future with their saga and spin-off Star Wars films. This according to MakingStarWars.net, whose sources now claim that the young Han Solo movie has been moved from May 25, 2018 to the new date of December 13, 2018. The studios have yet to confirm the news, but based on similar moves made by The Force Awakens and Rogue One, it seems like a logical next step for the Mouse House. We now look forward to the next saga film in Star Wars Episode 8, which is set for release this year on December 15th. Mark, are you hoping the young Han Solo movie will land on December of 2018 rather than May? Ashley, I am, and I don't know what the rest of the panel feels about this. I'm interested to see if you guys are excited that Star Wars is now just going to be owning Christmas every year, but I like this. I think it's the safest landing spot for the Millennium Falcon. It's a lot safer than Docking Bay 94 was because we've already seen Star Wars movies do well, and not just well around Christmas, because before Force Awakens came out, the most money-making movie or the best opening weekend of anything was Avatar, and it only did like, what, 80 or something million dollars. Star Wars proved that you can make just as much money around Christmas as you can in the big blockbuster season of the summer and I liked it especially with a Han Solo movie that's standalone that is not one of the episodic adventures that it gives it a little bit less competition from all the other comic book movies that are probably going to come out in the summer so I love this landing spot for the Han Solo movie and for all Star Wars movies going forward. Perry. This is so smart and not just because it's worked for them twice so obviously they should stick to the same schedule but when you do look at the schedule that's coming out next year so if it had stayed in May, Transformers 6 would have come the weekend after, then Incredibles 2, then Jurassic World. Instead, now in December, it faces Mortal Engines, I don't even know what that is, an animated Spider-Man movie, Mary Poppins, and some sort of untitled Warner Brothers event film. Clearly, it is in a much better position now. See, this is why we're a good team, is because I make a very broad general point. Perry backs <laughs> it up with actual facts and information. <laughs> Schnepp. I can't back anything up, but I, I think it's a good idea. I mean, you know, the, the nerd of me would like it to return to its original home base of May, but you know what? I think uh, it being a Christmas film and, and just it, like, not having not a lot of uh, competition as well, but it just kind of, like, you get used to it now. Now I'm like, oh, Rogue One, next year we'll, be, we'll have uh, episode eight, you know, so I, I'm, I'm excited that it'll stay there until they go to two a year. Then it'd be May and December. Well, see, I also enjoy gearing up for seeing Star Wars. And sometimes it takes a full year to get that promotional machine revved up to the right, you know, amplitude. Because I don't want to see Episode Eight, then be like, all right, now I got to prepare for Han Solo in six months. Like, I like having one Star Wars movie a year, and I like it being around Christmas. Well, I mean, I don't know. I got I to gotta disagree with you on that, because, look, we've had... Like, we have six or seven comic book movies now coming out mm -hmm. each year, and we never seem to have any problem getting revved up and amped up and ready for the next comic book movie. I mean, we just had Doctor Strange, but I think we're all already salivating over Thor Ragnarok, Wonder Woman, Justice League, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff that all happens within the same year. I want them to start releasing some movies in May. <laughs> I mean, this whole idea, I, I don't understand this notion that it's only in December that it can really hit and make money. Guess what? Avengers opened in May, mm -hmm. and it made over $1.5 billion opening in May. You know what Star Wars could do opening in May? It could do a lot of damage. Jurassic World didn't open, and it could dominate that stuff. Here's the one interesting thing. I do agree with the idea that always releasing them in December kind of makes it now a part of the season. I, I, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think that's a cool thing. But... If they do move this to May, remember, this has not been confirmed by Lucasfilm or Disney at all. This is just a report, hasn't been confirmed yet. But if it's true, and they are moving Han Solo to December, I think this works against our friend Christian Harloff's theory that Star Wars is trying to get itself positioned to do two movies a year. I think if Star Wars really was thinking about doing two movies a year, they would keep this movie on May and start to stake their claim on two release dates and months during the year instead of just Christmas time. So, I mean, look, speculation, absolutely, but I don't know, what do you think? Um, yeah, uh, the way I see it is it's kind of like if you have this, because uh, releasing in December, it works for Star Wars. We've seen it work twice now. Uh, it, it's kind of like having an island that's a perfect utopia, and then you're faced with the with the option of, all right, I'm going to go over to the fog bank over there where there are a lot of islands, hoping that one of the islands I bank over there is better than the one I mm. have. Just commit to your island, commit to your utopia. <laughs> you landed it. Good job, Star Wars. You own everything. 
every December like Lord of the Rings did back in the early 2000s. I think something interesting that should not be overlooked, too, is the, the issue that they had with Rogue One trying to separate that from Episode 7, trying to let us know that it wasn't a sequel, it was a standalone. Episode 8 comes out, and then a lot of people hear there's a Han Solo movie coming out six months. Well, we know what happened to Han Solo in Force Awakens. Is that going to cause more confusion <laughs> unless you have that full year to properly promote? I mean, I still think Rogue One dropped the ball a little bit in letting everybody out there know that this is not a sequel to Force Awakens. And I think giving themselves that time frame to have a full year to let everybody know, okay, let's take our breath from Episode Eight, and now let's tell another standalone story. I think it helps Star Wars promoting it. If, if they do this, could that mean that they're going to release Episode Nine in May? No. In 2019, and then start doing the two a year. Who knows? I think, they, I, I think they wait odd, to do two a year, and I think Christian probably feels the same way, is that they wait to, to if they want to do two a year, which I don't like, but if they're going to do it, I think they wait until after episode nine, see how many more episodic movies we get with Ray and Finn and all those people, along with the standalone stories. All right, guys. Well, it's Tuesday, which means it's time for us to talk about what is opening this week, brought to you by our friends at AMC <laughs> Theaters. Now, there's a few films opening. We're going to focus on one, though. Which one are we focusing on today, Ashley? It's Underworld Blood Wars. Death dealer Celine Kate Beckinsale must fend off brutal attacks from both the Lycan clan and the vampire faction that betrayed her. Joining forces with allies David, Theo James, and Thomas, Peter Anderson, she <laughs> embarks on a quest to end the eternal war between the two races, even if it means making the ultimate sacrifice all right so couple there's a couple of conflicting pieces of info here all right i gave up on the underworld franchise after three all right so i didn't even see the fourth one but from what i am told it's a good thing i skipped the fourth one you're from missing what I'm out told. you're missing out so. now on the one hand i kind i like the trailers for this one i did not like the trailers for the last one but i do like the trailers for this one and they have been promoting this hard especially i'm a ufc fan i was watching <clears throat> ufc 207 the other night and every single commercial break was underworld underworld they seem that the trailers look good and they seem to be promoting it a lot that's a good thing they're doing no press screenings for this movie there has never been a more giant red flag that says that's this, this that's that's the studio putting up this giant flag that says we think our movie sucks. <laughs> we think our movie sucks. When when a studio will not show because you like your film and you think people are going to like it, you show it to critics and you get them buzzing about it and get them to tell other people they're going to see it. When you don't show it at all, that is a huge red flag. Doesn't take away from the fact that I think the trailers look good and everything, but. I mean, this has got stink written all over it now. But So I don't know what to think. What do you think, Mark? I mean, I like my vampires falling in love in high school. I don't really like them <laughs> battling Kate Beckinsale. If they have to, then I, 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 I would like to get excited about these movies because it does seem like something that's right up my alley. It's, a, it's filmed in the same cool blue Instagram font that they made all the other movies, and it looks like an exciting action adventure, but they always just feel dull to me anyway. I think I've seen all four, and I've just never been that moved by Underworld, so I can't give this one the credibility. Now it's in the point where it has to prove to me that it is not just another Underworld movie, that they actually are taking it in a new, exciting direction, and the trailers have not done that. What do you think, Jeremy? Well, uh, on my old channel, I took on a project. It was a, it, it was a challenge, and I took Batman and Robin and cut together a trailer to see if I can make the movie look good. It was like eight years ago. There are things I would have done differently, but in the end, I was like, yeah, it makes Batman and Robin look good, which means trailers don't mean shit, which means, no, I'm not looking forward to this movie at all. The last movie was terrible. It was on my top ten worst, uh, worst list of the, of the year, and there are no press screenings. Yeah. So, no. Perry? I don't care. I don't like these movies at all. I've seen every single one of them once, and I've completely forgotten about all of them. I always compare this franchise to the Resident Evil franchise, and I know Resident Evil, some of those movies are not the greatest. However, every single Resident Evil movie I've ever seen, there's always just a tiny degree of fun where if it's on TV, I will rewatch it. So I'm always pitting the two against each other, and it's Resident Evil, like Underworld, down on the floor under the desk. Schnapp. Resident Evil has a sixth movie that's coming out. I can't wait. What's it called? <laughs> uh, Apocalypse, Blood Wars. <laughs> the Death Wars, of a Franchise. Or whatever. Yeah. Blood Wars. I'm going to be seeing that. The final know, chapter? You know, uh, this uh, is this a fifth one? Yeah, this is the fifth one. Um, I wrote an Underworld animated series arc, so I, I'm a little biased uh, towards the first and second film, but um, got to say, yeah, the fourth one was pretty horrible, and, you know, this one looks 
like a little bit more of the same. Like I don't really see that much more of an advancement in the storyline. So, I mean, look, you're gonna catch my attention with Kate Beckinsale in anything, right? But uh, I mean, jeez, especially I, in that fur coat. Who does? <laughs> hey. Go watch Love and Friendship. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, Love maybe. and Friendship is a great film. It is. It is. I, I just let's see what happens. Maybe it'll surprise us. Maybe, maybe it'll, surprise it'll be us. serendipitous. Oh. Thank you, man. Thank you. Baby carrots. All right, guys. Listen, <laughs> we're gonna do a little something here that uh, we like to do once in a while. This is a top five debate. Now. I'm going to let you guys know. I'm going to let you in a little bit behind the scenes stuff here, let you know a little something, is that we've kind of been testing out this uh, this way of doing the top five, and your response from you guys has been great, and thank you for your input. Um, at some point, you are going to see us develop a top five show based on this. That's kind of going to be a uh, adjustment, if you will, of the top ten show that we used to do that's been on hiatus for a while. We're readjusting it. We've been making some adjustments. It's going to come back. Who's going to be on it? When will it air? How often will it air? All that is stuff that we will announce a little bit later. But uh, we have fun doing these top five things. So we thought, since we're in the first week of the new year, we are going to debate. Now, all of us have had some semblance of a top ten list of the year. But it's time for us to actually debate it. And we are going to come up with what we are going to definitively say are the top five best films of 2016. Here's how this little thing works. We have three rounds. We have number one, the nomination round, where we come up with seven potential films. Round number two is the elimination round, where we bring that list of seven down to five. And then the third round is the ranking round, where we actually rank the five remaining films. This is how it's going to work. We're going to start with John Schnepp, who's going to nominate a film. We're all going to vote whether that film gets on the list, then move on to the next nomination. We'll do that until we get a list of seven. So John Schnepp, starting with you, what movie would you nominate to be in the top seven? Like, so this would be like my number seven? No, no, no. Just nominate any single okay. film that should be on our list. La La Land. La La, right. La Land. All right, so Jeremy, should La La Land make it on the list? Oh. You have to have at least two other people agree with you to get it on the list. Yeah, La La Land was sweet. I'll put it on the list. Okay, you're going to put it on the list, Mark? Mortal Kombat. I'm sorry, John. Yes. <laughs> yes, La La Land should be on the list. A throwback to the last time we did it. And that. Perry. Do you even have to ask me at this point? Of course it should be on the list. And I'm actually going to say yes as well. Oh, so, good. okay, hey. no discussion, no debate. We yeah. all agree <laughs> La La Land gets on the list. So, Jeremy Johns, it's your turn to nominate a film. Which film are you going to nominate to be on our list? He's being very cagey, John. He's yes, not letting he anybody he's see. He's playing it very writing. close to the vest. Are they two R's on arrival? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's I think you might have just showed your hand a little bit. <laughs> I think there are three. I'm pretty sure there's a silent Q. <laughs> uh, our rival. Our rival. All right. Of course, the 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 quasi sci-fi time travel film. And I'm gonna say. Fuck no! Oh, I know. Whoa. Whoa. That's a Man. bad word. No, this is this this is a <laughs> drastically overrated film that is getting praised Woo. because of its concept, but I contend that its execution was muddy. It, it was un unlikable characters. I'm going to look. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not saying I hate the movie. I don't. But I do not believe that Arrival has any place on like a list, like a top seven or a top five. I vote. No oh, on like, arrival. Fuck no, I don't no. hate it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no, right. no. no on arrival. I don't know. What about you, Perry? A uh, big yes for me. I love this movie. I love Denis Villeneuve. I think he does an excellent job with this. I think Amy Adams is fantastic in it. Normally, I get frustrated when I can't completely wrap my head around a concept. This, however, fascinated me. And a real <laughs> hey 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 hey. <laughs> Uh, so two so people got, need so to. We need one the more. The ugliest hearts right back. <laughs> two people need to ratify it, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so one is ratified. Yeah. Unfortunately, that vote is not going to be me because I really liked Arrival. I thought it was damn good. I was very impressed by it. It moved me as a human being. I just don't think it's in the top seven best movies of the year. I can't. So I it all say no. comes down to John Schnepp. Schnepp. <laughs> Schnepp does Arrival make it onto our top list? <laughs> he's, he's drawing something. I'm not sure what it is. Oh. It's E.T. It's oh. E.T. Oh, it's a sad no! E.T. No, you yes! I, I really, yes! Yes! I, I, really I think Arrival is right outside of my top ten. It's actually my number 11. I really enjoy the film, but there are so many other films that, to me, were a little bit better in different ways. There's not an F no for me on Arrival. <laughs> I actually really mm -hmm. enjoyed it, but there's yeah. just a lot of really great films this year. So I'm putting Mortal Kombat next time. <laughs> <laughs> See, okay, it's the right so way to go. Arrival, I'm, I'm surprised. I thought it would be the lone descent. Look, let me look careful. I do like Arrival, but I just, no way it deserves to be on this the, list. The no comment way. section has already had it say, John. <laughs> All right. It's my turn. 
No matter what I write on this card, Jeremy Johns is going to vote against it. But <laughs> no, no, I'm an objective person. I can it's my turn. It. I'm going to nominate. So, so far, we still have one. I'm going to nominate Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge. Look, to me, this movie was absolutely brilliant. And one of the things that Mel Gibson did so well in it is he showed us two sides. No violence, and yet heroes of war without ever compromising either of them. I mean, I, I, the way he pulled that off in the movie I thought was spectacular. Fantastic performances, great drama involved, and one of the truly most remarkable stories uh, to come out of American war history, I think. So I want to nominate Hacksaw Ridge. Jeremy, do I get a ratification from you? You do. That was one of my favorite oh, movies excellent. this year. Oh, excellent. I told you, man. Friendship. I'm an objective person. Mending I, fences. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you. I, uh, yeah, I loved Hacksaw Ridge for all the reasons you said. I think it was like, it was top, it was number two or three on my top ten list. Mm. I can't say no to that, so it's on. Okay, Schnepp, what about you? Not even in my top ten, unfortunately. Oh! It, did, it doesn't break it. I mean, I think it's a good film, but I, for me, he peaked at Apocalypto. And peak doesn't mean he's not going to do better films, but... This just wasn't in my top ten. Okay, we're going to go over now to Perry. It hurts me to say this because I, I love the film. I think it's fantastic. It did just miss out on creeping into my top ten. It's a firm honorable mention. I think that film is fantastic, and I really hope Andrew Garfield gets some love this award season, but not my top ten. Oh, so it comes down now to Mark Ellis. Mark Look, Ellis, does Hacksaw Ridge get in? When I play basketball, John, I'm a point guard, maybe a shooting guard at worst. I very rarely get to be a center, but when I do, I enjoy it, and I'm going to have to give you guys the Matumbo. No, oh, no, can't do it. Really? This is going to be the longest it's, top five. Hacksaw Ridge, it's Hacksaw Ridge is, my number one film Hacksaw of the year. is a great film, and I feel I think that and Arrival were both in my honorable mentions. I love those movies. I just don't see it being a top five or top seven film this year. I'm sorry. Holy crap. Okay, so Arrival, which I voted against, but I still thought would get on, not get in. And my number one film of the year, Hacksaw Ridge, does not get in. What if you just left? You're just like, fine, <laughs> you guys do the left. All right, now we go over to Perry. All Perry. Right. Da -da -da. Roll Roll one. One. I love this movie. I think it stands on its own, and I know so. I couldn't believe how many non Star Wars fans told me they saw this movie and how much they adored it. And if you are a fan, Oh my God, this is the best kind of fan service I think I've ever seen in my life. The last half hour of that movie, I can't even explain the emotions I was feeling because I was just so shocked and amazed by how well they did what they did. I think Gareth Edwards pulled this together great. I think Felicity Jones made for an excellent lead. I can't say enough good things about Rogue One. I loved it. Mark, what does it get on? Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. As great as Hacksaw Ridge and Arrival were, I think the last, it, not just the last third, but everything about Rogue One, it was great fan service. I think that it did so much great world building in a movie that I didn't expect it to. But you're right, Perry. The last third act, not just the last few things we see, but the entire third act was the best war movie I saw this year. All right, so it needs one more ratification, Jeremy Johns. Oh, you're going to me. It needs one more from me. Um... We got to get some bodies on that list, man. So I'm going to, not only for that, am I saying, yeah. Gonna, you're not thinking only, more in terms of the show. Yeah, not only am I going to be like, look, guys, we got to keep this under two hours. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I do agree. <laughs> well, we know where it's going either way. Right. Uh, no, I, I, but uh, I, I like the movie as a movie. And as a Star Wars fan, I agree. There's a lot of fan service that doesn't carry the movie, but it's there if you are a fan. And the last third act is there right there with uh, the Return of the Jedi climax mm, also. Totally. It's like the two have the best Star Wars climax. Yeah, I uh, it, to me, I, I like the first half of the movie even more than the second half of the movie, and I love the second half of the movie. So for me, it's a yes. Is it unanimous? Well, obviously, we already saw your side. Yes. <laughs> it's unanimous. So yeah. fuck it. We hey. finally got our second movie on the list. Rogue One makes it onto the list of seven. Now we move over to Mark Ellis. What is your nominee? It's not Mortal Kombat, John. I know I'm going <laughs> to surprise some people. Uh, this is a movie I think was the, it wasn't my favorite film of the year, but I think it was the most important movie of the year, so I'm interested to see if it can make it on the list or not. And I drew it. I drew it. You guys get hey. it? Arrival. Mo moonlight. Deadpool. Moonlight. It is a moon with light Deadpool. coming Deadpool. out of it. Yeah. it I thought it was the Arrival ship. It does it's, look like it the Arrival ship. Deadpool. Yeah, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Moonlight, and I think it deserves a, a spot on the top seven. Okay, what do you think, Perry? Does Moonlight get on? Oh, it's, it, you're right. It's such an important film. It's excellent. It's so well done. This is one of my favorite ensembles of the year. Mm -hmm. I have to say no, because it's not in my top ten. And again, it's another one that is in my honorable mention mm -hmm. section. I've seen it twice now, and it's, it's fantastic, but, but no. The performances in Moonlight, uh, the ensemble performances are incredible. The subject matter is important. It's handled incredibly well. It is in my top ten of the, of the year list. 
but it's not in my top seven. It's uh, it's my number eight film. Um, but you know what? I'm going to vote yes. I'm going to vote yes because since since Hacksaw Ridge is out, <laughs> it kind of moves <laughs> that number eight. That's right. It moves yeah. that number eight into the number seven yeah. spot for me. So. Yeah, actually, I then I gotta say Isn't yes. It I, I interesting just say yes. too that it's like like even if we're saying no, it's like no. This is like this movie is so good. Like like we, we all like the same movies here. It's just very tough to get them in the top five or top seven. Okay, like, so I've got and you you voted no, right? Yeah. And I'm voting yeah. yes. I have to more. take myself out because I have not seen it yet. I have a I screener. I almost either. saw it, so guys, I can't say yes. What do we do here? I, I, I saw 100 no, no. movies this year. If that's the case, then we only have three eligible votes, and we have two yes, one no. Moonlight makes it onto Damn. the okay. list. Okay, right, fair enough. All right. Okay. I Although like I got your, a suspicion yeah. it may not survive the elimination round. It's, yeah, two of the guys haven't seen it. Because it be needs tough. three yes I didn't want to be that on. guy. It's like, yeah, I'll fill in the line. I didn't study for anything. But yeah, sure, that guy can run off. Okay, of Schnepp, the next nomination goes to you. All Which right. film do you nominate next? I am going to nominate. I like how you have your list on your phone like I do. Yeah. Don't want to, you know. Of course, you couldn't be ready. He just had five <laughs> minutes to write this. Hey, <laughs> relax. He's got a baby to take care of. Yeah. Look at that thing. Quato is hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got Doctor S- Strange Weird. Doctor, yeah. Weird. Doctor Strange. Strange. He's got on there. Why does he deserve to be in the top seven? Well, to me, it's one of the, the greatest superhero films, best origin film, really fantastic. Uh, Marvel really pushing the boundaries of what I thought they were even in their comfort zone with. So to me, it's like a risk for Marvel to do a film like Doctor Strange and that they did it so well is why it's in my top 10 films. All right, Jeremy, does it get a ratification from you? I think it's a it's a great movie. It's a great Marvel movie. It's an exciting movie. It has a great ending. It has a great character, a great actor playing a great character, but it's not in my top seven. So I have to, by logic, say no. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoy this movie a lot but it isn't in my top 10 films of the year i think they do a lot of things right i enjoyed it immensely can't wait to see the next one can't wait to see him in thor ragnarok but it's not even in my top 10 so i i've got to go no Perry. yeah i'm i'm no as well it's not in my top 10 but like i said before we just watched it again and it's a it's a really really good superhero movie it's a really good origin story it's got a couple of my favorite action sequences of the year the the surgery scene is one of my favorite scenes of mm, 2016 cool but movie overall not the top all right well mark ellis said at this point it's yeah. kind of moot but no so okay so <laughs> Doctor Strange. It just goes, just, nope nah. yeah. so that's off all right jeremy next nomination goes to you all right here we go here we go here we go Again, had five minutes to think about it, write something down, but he's going to write it down now. Good job, Jeremy. Um, hmm. All right. All right, <clears throat> all right. The world trembles in anticipation. What I'm do we going got? Civil War. Ooh. Because if there is a comic book movie this year, I, I'm bridging the gaps here, John. I'm like, you know what? I, I, I agree. Uh, we have ourselves a lot of fun, but this is a lot of fun that's been built up for about eight years now, and it paid off in a huge way. Um, I'm saying Civil War. And uh, I'm going to ratify th- that myself personally. I think it's not just a great comic book movie. It, it cross. W- what we see Marvel doing is crossing a lot of different genres of their different films, and this one merged a couple of them together really, really well. And it just these nice little cherries on top, like the Spider-Man stuff yeah. and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. So I'm going to say yes to it. The Russos, you? man. Oh, you guys are killing. It's like all my honorable mentions I have to cut. That, and it breaks that. my heart because. I, I love Civil War. I love the Russo brothers. I'm so glad that these two are at the helm of all this now. But no, it's not in my top. I could say this, Perry. I'm actually killing time to where we go back around to you. And I'm like, tell, tell us a classy film. I need to know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, what about you? I really appreciated Jeremy's argument because I think you make a lot of good points. It, again, it's one of these situations where I love the movie. It's an honorable mention. It's not my top seven. But I'm very happy to say that I still think it's going to get on the board because of what I just saw somebody else draw. <laughs> So Qua- you're, I you're say no. no. You're yeah. no. Quato that says awesome. yes. All right. Quato! Dude, you're a good <laughs> artist, man. He says yes, and you nominated it, so yep. it's there. Civil War gets on the list. All so right. we've so far, we've got La La Land, Rogue One, Moonlight, Civil War. we got to get three more. And I feel pretty good about my next mm-hmm. nomination, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go Hell or High Water. Yes. Mm. yes. This was a movie to me that... On its surface, like, oh, this looks like it could be a nice little film. I mean, I love Ben Foster. Besides Chiwetel Ejiofor, I think Ben Foster's most underrated actor in the business for a long time. Chris Pine is, has been coming on a little bit. Of course, you got Jeff Bridges. The field blown away 
absolutely sucked into the screen mm. for every second this movie was on. I love this film. It ranked very high on my top five list uh, of the year. So I'm going to nominate Hell or High Water. What about you, John Schnepp? Well, uh, Roca also had an incredible role as uh, Jeff Bridges' partner. <laughs> <laughs> Roca, you did such an amazing job in that film. I didn't know he had it in him. Um, that's my number three film of the year is Hell or High Water. I absolutely love this film. Every minute of this film is incredible. If you have not seen it, see it immediately after watching this th our, our show today. Just rent that. See it. You will not be disappointed. So it's a yes? Uh, hell yes. All right, with Jeremy <laughs> Johns. Uh, Mark Ellis, what do you say? Uh, I say that we had a blast going to this movie. I think a bunch of us just walked over to the AMC we did. to go see it. And, yeah. you know, expectations were a little high because we liked the cast and crew. When you see the trailer, you're like, it, I didn't hear about this movie. Is this a direct-to-video thing? Is this on demand? Is this playing in theaters? It is one of the best movies of the year, and it's one of my favorite movies that I've seen in a long time. It definitely deserves Jeremy Johnson's vote. All right, sweet. <laughs> I, I only yes. see so, so much. That's it. it's, it's ratified then. Really? Like, one of your favorite like of all, like, of all time? I mean, you've seen it, in years? recent memory. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's it. Just for argument's sake, Perry. I mean, it's been ratified, but was it that was my you... number eight? It was my number eight. Oh, so I feel, Perry. I feel like logic. I have to not include it, but I'm happy it's on the. But board. do you have? Do you have seven others still on the list that so, are still available? So like the rule that it, are still it available. Bumps up. So I guess technically it does make the cut then. Okay. So so <laughs> we now have Good five night. films. We got La La Land, Rogue One, Moonlight, Civil War, Hell or High Water. We need two more on this list to move on to the next round. What do you think, Perry? Jeremy, I have the classiest one uh, The classiest one, for you. one. I need it. You ready uh, for this? I need Here it. it comes. <laughs> Green yeah. Room. You have that poster in your office. I know right now I'm going to get overruled, and I don't care because I'm talking about this movie again. And if you love genre, I think you need to see this movie. It is so well done in so many different ways where everyone knows I love me some slasher movies. I love watching movies where, sick and twisted as it may seem, I fall in love with characters and they get picked off in brutal ways one by one. However, that's not just what this movie is. This movie is about so many different people and so many different agendas and how they all like kind of crash and implode and, you know, Jeremy Saulnier, even though there's clear bad guys in this movie, he respects everyone's agenda. Don't give and too that much away it, for people who haven't seen it. That makes it even more heightened and tense is that, you know, you, you can understand everybody in this movie. I love this movie. It's a, it's a smart film. It was a surprising film. One of Anton, uh, Anton Yelchin's Yelchin, final yeah. performances, of course. It's in my top 15 of the year. I love it, but it's, it's not <laughs> close to my top five. So I'm going to vote no on, on Green Room. What about you, Schnepp? Oh, oh, oh have a Sean Green Room. I love how you're drawing all your answers. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it up, dude. Got a couple skinheads on oh, there. Little <laughs> dog. I like the dog. All right, uh, Jeremy Johns, what about you? Does Green Room um, get you, on? You know, it's funny. Is I uh, I saw that in the uh, the bin on sale for sale on Black Friday, and I was like, I should totally get that because I need to see Green Room. Mm -hmm. But I haven't seen. This is really exposing how much I didn't see this year. I have and, so uh, many can, hi, of that I, I'm DVD Jeremy. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> Mark Ellis. Uh, the kick is up. Up and it's no good. Sorry. Can't, can't All right. I like Green Room, can't do it. So Green Room does not get on. Yep. So we Aww. move back to you, Mark Ellis. We still need two more. Back to me. Don't worry. This one's definitely gonna you guys get it yet? Lights um, out? No. A uh, guy on the phone angry. Is he blind? It's Please. a monster call. <laughs> Super oh! vampire call. <laughs> a monster call. Damn it! <laughs> a monster calls is uh Damn it's it. it's one of the it's not only one of the best movies of the year. It's directed by Jay Bayonne. It's got a great cast, but it also, everybody can relate to this movie, and it's so emotional without clubbing you over the head with it. It's got a kid dealing with so many different things in his life, and this giant tree that might be even a better tree than Groot. Yeah, I said it. Helps him out, tells him some stories, and makes everybody feel a little bit better about themselves, but not using the, the emotions with kid gloves either. I thought this movie was brilliantly executed, and it's one of the most moving experiences you'll have in a theater. Damn you. I love this movie. Thank you. But I had two others in mind that I want to fill those spots, mm. but you've now just caused me a I real John conundrum. Campia. Oh, I got to defer for a second. I'll come back to me for a minute. Schnepp, what about, what about you? I say no. Uh, I, am I, really, I really did not like this movie, and I saw it after all of the hype, and everyone talked about how, what a great film it was, and I just could not emotionally connect to the story. I felt they introduced these, like, Stories. I'm not going to get too much into it, but the stories that the monster tells were just not not really that good. They were horrible animation. I just so much of it felt contrived. And I, if you want my full review, you just tune in later. He's I'm a not tree. Gonna, you want him to be Jeffrey Charles? I want him to be Groot. <laughs> just say I am tree and get out of here. I thought it was a, Liam Neeson was better as the lion. 
<laughs> All right. Well, what about you, Perry? What about no. Monster Calls? No. No, but this movie is opening wide this week. I was going to so say, if you look behind Perry's head, see it. You, it comes soon. You really should see it. However, this is a sad movie, and I, uh, I don't know. It. I sad felt like movies it are did movies too. Beat me over the head with it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a per that's a perfect tag. Please somebody design that t shirt. Sad <laughs> movies are movies too. <laughs> well, this movie is sad because I cried the entire third act and have no desire to ever see it again. Uh, all right, you know what? I uh I'm gonna close this one out then. I'm I'm gonna say no. All right, well it's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now we go back over to Schnepp. We still need two more films. Schnepp, give us something that we can that we can hang our hats on here. All right. This will this will break up everybody. No one's going to agree on this. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, don't breathe. I thought this was one of the, not only the, the best horror films, but also one of the most suspenseful, psychotic, freak out films that I've endured in a good way the entire year. I was yelling at the screen. I was completely involved, as was the entire audience that I saw it with. Um, <clears throat> fantastic film. Lang deserves an Oscar. I think slang. it's slang. Like, slang. That's right. Get on at slang. Um, I I just really enjoyed this film, and it, it worked on all the levels. Fetty Alvarez, incredible director. Uh, the story, just a really tight, taut psychological thriller. Everything about it, I loved. It's in my top seven. So I oh, look, this movie was awesome. I love this movie. I think there's an argument to be made that Slang should get a Best Supporting Actor nomination mm -hmm. for it. I, I really do. I think he was that good in it. But I'm going to vote no. It, it, it just, I love it. I love it. I love it. It just doesn't rank that high for me, so i got to say no. Yeah, I, I thought it was a great suspense for everything uh, John Schnepp is saying. Um, not everything in the movie worked for me, but a lot did. And Stephen Lang, slang himself, he absolutely did. But I can think of five movies I'd rather have on the list, so I, I can't say yes. Turkey baster. Okay. Turkey baster. <laughs> I know where this is heading, and if I play by the rules of crossing things off now... This this sneaks in, so oh, I'm gonna, we got a yes I'm gonna say yes. If you do this enough and eliminate enough, yeah. you're gonna start well, nominating garbage. This, you know what I mean? Like, oh please. <laughs> I'm saying, like, just in the rule of elimination, it's like, oh, that was number 100, but now it's on the list. We, we had a solid list of movies though this year. I don't exactly. think we'd ever get to garbage territory. Okay, garbage so movies got, are garbage too. Hypothetically, we got two no's, we got two yeses. Tiebreaker goes to Mark Ellis. I think Don't Breathe is up there with Rogue One and Civil War as the most fun I've had in a movie theater this year. It's such a great time to see it with a packed house. Uh, I think it's the best horror movie of the year. Sorry, Green Room. Sorry, Inside or Lights Out. I think it was awesome, but it's not top seven. Sorry. Got to deny it. All right, so now we go back. So it does not get unless we're still stuck at La La and Rogue One, Moonlight, crowd. Civil War, and Hell or High Water, Jeremy Johns. It's tough to come to you. consensus. Yeah. All right, Jeremy, what I do you got? I got you. I got your back. Deepwater Horizon. Deepwater Horizon was some of the most intense filmmaking. It was the best disaster movie I had seen since the second half of Titanic. And uh, it, uh, I mean, if you watch this thing in the theater, you get the scope of everything that happened. Mark Wahlberg was fantastic. He was also fantastic in Patriot's Day, also directed by the same director. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I'm telling you, Deepwater Horizon actually had my jaw hit the floor the entire time. Love that one. Mm. Very much. I was really surprised by Deepwater Horizon, how good it was, how much I enjoyed it. But I don't even think it's the best movie that that tandem put out this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought Patriot's Day was even better than it, so I'm going to go, even though I love the movie, I'm going to go no. You know, it's funny, as I didn't see it, but I actually just downloaded it this morning for my flight on Thursday night. So I'll get oh, back to you on go. that, but <laughs> it doesn't count now. Yeah, Patriot's Day, I think, is a little bit better. Deepwater Horizon's fantastic, but I, I can't put it in the list. Right, so that's two for Shh. Patriot's Day. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I also didn't see it. It's, I, I just bought it on Xbox. All right, so it gets to go... It goes to no. So, I feel good about this one. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> this is a coin toss. You guys didn't put Hacksaw Ridge on it. So, so I don't know what's going to happen here. Look, Deadpool. Not every movie has to be about a college dropout who's addicted to heroin while trying to maintain a relationship with his formerly <laughs> abusive father. Not every movie has. On a pure entertainment level, on a pure entertainment level, I don't know that I had a more entertaining time at the movie theater this year than I did at Deadpool. It's outrageously irreverent, it's incredibly funny, and yet they managed to work in incredibly choreographed action all the same time. The fourth wall breaking was handled great. It was everything that Deadpool fans hoped a Deadpool movie could be. And just on its pure entertainment level, I nominate it. So, Schnepp, what do you think? Yes, I know I didn't have time to draw, but yes. <laughs> uh, uh, 
it's, 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 it was number nine on mine. So, but because of the way we, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's now number up, three. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, it's like number seven. Now, okay, so. Jeremy, what about you? Well, the good, good thing is I'm pretty confident we've all seen this one, so that's a good <laughs> news. This is a great start. Uh, yeah, I uh, of where we're at now. Deadpool is absolutely. I think it was number four on my uh, or five on my top ten list. So yeah, it's there. It's definitely in top seven. This is not on mine, but I'm okay if all three of you vote yes. Okay, so and so it's been ratified. It's been ratified. I wouldn't say yes, but it's a really, really great film. Might be the best comic book movie of the year. All right, so we got room for one more film. We've got La La Land, Rogue One, Moonlight, Civil War, Hell or High Water, and Deadpool. We got room for one more film before we move on to the round two. Okay, Perry, you got this seventh film. Oh, I have this. I am so <laughs> relieved we got to me one more time before this finished. Sing Street. All right. Yeah, actually, I, I'm surprised it hasn't been nominated yeah, up to this point. So, yeah. so am I. And I can't believe how much I love the musical movies that have come out this year. I have not stopped listening to the La La Land soundtrack, and I am addicted to this soundtrack. There are so many great sequences in this movie. If something in this movie does not get nominated for original uh, song and possibly even win, I'm going to actually, I mean La La Land, you know. But <laughs> I love the music in this. I love the characters. I love the romance. I love the idea of just what he has to do to kind of achieve your dream and how hard that is. This is such a well-done movie, so much fun, so addictive. I'm so glad I own it. All right, Mark Ellis, the Sing Street, get on the list. It's not yes, it's hell yes. I love <laughs> Sing Street. I think it's one of the best movies of the year. It deserves to be on the list. Well done, Perry. Jeremy Johns. Uh, Patriots Day. We're not going to come back around <laughs> to Patriots Day. <laughs> so Peter Burke's going to get no love today. Um, again, um, it only needs there, one more yes vote. Yeah, it, it does need one more yes vote. I'm didn't. Uh, if I didn't see it, can I still say yes? Just so we <laughs> no, can you can't. You got okay. to I'm going to be in all, in all reality. I didn't. I hadn't seen Sing Street. John Schnepp. Does it get uh, on? He's writing a oh, lot. He's writing something. That's, that's, that's wow, too many letters for a no. <laughs> yeah, might be too many for a yes as well. I don't know what it means. Oh. Not singing. I did. I did enjoy the film. I really enjoyed it. I loved the first hour more so than the last like 30 minutes. I felt it kind of fell apart, but the songs are great. Everything about it was great. It didn't get into my top 10, but it's in honorable mentions. I think it's a good film. So you're still you're still humming. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm torn because I got another film I want to get in there. Peter Burke, thanks you for your service. I'm gonna say yes. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say right. yes. What's the other film? The other film, I, the, the other film I was gonna nominate was Moana. Actually, I, I think it's by far the best animated film of the year. I think. Mo, I think. I would have ratified Moana. I think I you're like welcome. Cuba. <laughs> I think you're welcome. Should win best song at the Oscars yeah. this year. Mm -hmm. the, when you when you count how it fits into the movie and the liveliness of, but all that kind of stuff. But you know what? Sing Street is effing you're spectacular. You're welcome over audition. Yeah. Yeah, well done. but I, I love it. So we've got our seven. Finally, it Ooh, took us like a half hour. Damn. But our seven now are La La Land, Rogue One, Moonlight, Civil War, Hell or High Water, Deadpool, and Sing Street. We now move on to round number two. This is the elimination round where we eliminate two of the films that made it onto this list to come down to our final five. It works a little bit like the first round where one person will nominate a film to get eliminated well, if it gets three votes to get eliminated, it gets eliminated, and we repeat that process until we come down to the final five. I will put the pressure on myself. I will start things off here with films that should get eliminated, and I'm going to do one that will be unpopular. Hmm. Moonlight. <laughs> that is a that is chocolate, a misshapen pizza Chocolate slice. chip cookie, the movie. Apparently, <laughs> it looks like an amoeba. Um, I love how you actually drew like you, you drew like the little like craters in the moon too. It's very detailed. It's it's that's I cannot draw. Okay, so I'm I, I love Moonlight. It's an important film. It's a brilliantly directed film. It's an amazing film. Uh, but I'm going to nominate it to get eliminated just by show of hands. Who supports the elimination of Moonlight? Oh, look at Schnepp's drawing. Is that <laughs> oh, you supporting or not? That's me supporting the elimination. Supporting it only needs one more. No! I, I haven't seen it. Okay, so you can't. What about you two? <laughs> I don't support the elimination, though. No. So it's even, no. then. So no. it's, I nominated it. So it's even. So we've got. Okay, we, we're in a conundrum then. You know what? Point I'm gonna, flip. I'm going to call an audible. I'm going to call an audible here. Has anybody in this room seen Moonlight? <laughs> anybody in the room? God. Yes! Okay, you know what? All right, so don't feel so bad for not seeing it. Then Hell or High Water gets a push right now. If anything else, if it comes down to it, it will get eliminated if nothing else gets three votes to eliminate. Mm -hmm. But for That's now, fair. it hangs in there. Jeremy, what do you nominate for elimination? For elimination? 
Um, all right, let's just rip off the bat. All right, so you guys, I, I'm playing tactics here. It's like, well, everyone here was saying Hell or High Water was their favorite, so that's not going to do it. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to see what happens when I say Hell or High Water. Hell or High Water. Let's eliminate it, guys. Come Hell on. Hell no. What do you say? No way. What do you say? No way. It stays on. Get ballsy. Stays on. Stays yep. on. Now, now Okay, uh, so no, wait, oh, oh, no, he said no. Yeah. That right. wasn't even a drawing. That's but not that, real. That means, <laughs> so not so real by proxy count? of Jeremy's nominating Hell or High Water and it getting denied, that means that it is on the top it, five. It will stay okay. in the top <laughs> five for sure. Yeah, it got good. completely ratified that it stays on. All right, Schnapp, you got to eliminate one. I'm doing nominate the Nominate one to get work, eliminated. Folks. That's what I'm doing here. And the magic pen comes out again. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, I know he's going for. Oh. He's nominating Sing Street to get eliminated. Of the two musicals, one has got to go, and La La Land's got to stay. So. <laughs> oh. um, you know what? I'm I'm gonna ratify. I'm gonna say yeah. I think Sing Street. I love this film, but we're gonna end up in the same problem. Sing Street. So we got so we got two voting for for elimination. I say yes. It and stays you, on. We should take you, it to the room after. You, yeah. you vote to yeah. stay on? It definitely stays on. And you haven't seen it. That's me. Ask yeah. the room. So Ask again, room. who in this room has seen Sing Street? <laughs> oh. Okay, let's, I'm going right, to go to Dennis Zen. Dennis, yeah. out of La La Land, Rogue One, Moonlight, Civil War, Hell or High Water, Deadpool, and Sing Street, does Sing Street get eliminated? No, yeah. Dennis says no. Yeah. It stays on. So it stays on. Sing Street is ratified to stay on. All right. So we've got... Hell or High Water is ratified to stay in the top five. Sing Street is ratified to stay in the top five. Are we supposed to be writing those down? <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's got it. He knows. Uh, okay. He's on it. So we need, we need another one of these seven films nominated to be, to be eliminated. I'm sad to do it, but bye-bye, Deadpool. Oh. All right, she's I saying love it, but... Deadpool has to go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it stays. Uh, the Merc with the Mouth, one of my favorite movie experiences this year, but you're not top five. Sorry. All right, so he's voting. It's got to go. No, it's got to go. Really? <laughs> yeah, because out of the two superhero films, Civil War, to me, is better than Deadpool. All right, so Deadpool is the first Why film choose? off the <laughs> list. All right, so we have three, four other films that can possibly be nominated to be eliminated. It's unimaginable <laughs> that any of these films gets eliminated. Actually, only three left. Uh, well, Moonlight is on the bubble right now. Moonlight could get eliminated if none of the other films get three votes for elimination. Mark Ellis, what are you nominating for an elimination? Um, if we're playing tactics here, then I might have to nominate. I, I can't do it. I can't nominate Rogue One for elimination. I can't nominate La La Land. So I'm going to have to nominate Civil War. But look what I drew for Edge of 17. I was going to get to nominate that. <laughs> wow. that was By the way, in my top 10 list, Edge of 17. Yeah, that's that's a Colonel Allen for the 200 I'm moment, But I'm going to nominate <laughs> Civil War for elimination. I don't think it was the top five movie of the year. Okay, I'm going to deny <laughs> your thing. I think Civil War deserves to be up there. Perry? I am going to agree and say knock it off. All right. Oh, I'm denying that. I think Civil War is top five. So now it's up to you, Schnepp. Does Civil War stay on the top five? Totally stays up yeah. there. Captain America. All right. Because you sliced Deadpool. <laughs> so Civil War <laughs> is now up. confirmed. All right. So, Schnepp, you've got to now either nominate La La Land or Rogue One to be eliminated. Wow. Wait, that's wait. Rough. Can we revert yeah, votes tough. now? Because well, like, no, now that's been a eliminated to a point where I would change my vote for a certain something with a question mark. Oh, it's to too, late too late now. Too late. It's too, you, you had like to commit. It's like, it's like this marriage. Game. All right, so uh, Schnapp, you got to nominate one of these two. Boy, that's, right. a, that's a hard one, like either right. Star Wars or a really cool a musical, which is odd that a musical would even get there. So. It's like choosing between your kids that are coming out of your chest. <laughs> yeah. Well, Quato wins, so... La, All right. la, 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 I have la, to, Land. Between Rogue One and La La Land, I have to choose. I, la I'm la saying La La Land's got to stay on the list. I love this movie too much. It's got to stay there. I, I, I just love the fact that Perry looks like she's going to bust so an aneurysm upset. out of her head. Um, I, I agree with Schnepp. Of the two, I'd keep Rogue One. Okay. So wait, you're keeping? You no, 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 no. You just you don't. You're not picking between the two. You're just saying, do you? Well, those are the two that are left. So I agree no, with Schnepp. No, 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 no. Remember, if if here's the thing, if. La La None Land of the final two get going. eliminated, then Moonlight gets eliminated. Yeah. Oh. So you can still say yes. So you, yeah, just vote on the movie. Should La La Land be on the list? Should La La Land be in the top five or no? I didn't see Moonlight, but I'm going to go <laughs> egotistically with what I've seen. No, La La Land should stay. Okay. Damn La La right, Land should yeah. stay. It should definitely stay. Okay, so La La Land is, is, yeah, stays yeah, yeah. in the top five. It gets done. So the last question now is Rogue One. That's So I have to... That's weird. I have to nominate Rogue One for elimination. <laughs> um... <laughs> But, uh, so there it goes, it comes down to that. So, if two other people on this panel agree that Rogue One should be eliminated, then Moonlight <laughs> will advance. If, two, if three people do not 
uh, it vote to eliminate Rogue One. Moonlight gets eliminated, and Rogue One moves on. So, Schnapp, does Rogue One stay in the top five? Happy Death Star. Rogue One stays. So, Rogue One stays. <laughs> I agree with his Pokemon ball. It stays. Rogue One stays. I agree it stays. Rogue One stays. I'm a Monster Star Wars fan. So Rogue <laughs> One no says so. Yeah. It's weird. There's like yeah. no fighting that. Yeah. All right, so now we've come down. We've got our final five. Now our final five in no particular order are La La Land, Rogue One, Civil War, Hell or High Water, and Sing Street are now our top five. We now move on to the final round of this thing. Woo! It is the ranking round. Here's how this is going to go. I'm going to start things off by nominating a film to come in the number five spot. If... At least two other people agree that it stays in number five, then that film becomes the number five, and then we move on to number four, number three, and so on and so forth. So I will start this thing off, and I, you know, I'm not going to write it down because I don't have time. I'm going to nominate coming in the number five spot. I'm going to nominate Sing Street to come in at number five. Schnepp, do you agree with the ranking? I agree. All right. So all we need is one more agree vote. Sure. All right. He didn't see it. I didn't see it. He doesn't count. It's totally oh, true. Right. I didn't see it, but okay, I was like, well, yeah, sure. see what happens over here. No. What do you think? Sing Street, you say no for say number no. five. Um, I could be okay with it being number five. All right. It's a tough so five. Sing <laughs> Street comes okay. in at number five. So now we move on to you, Perry. You nominate a film for the number four spot. Okay, I'm going to go with what I would have put at five, and I'm going to say Civil War. Whew. Mark. Uh, yeah, I'm cool with that. Yep. Schnepp? I, I'm totally cool with that being number four. Yeah. I agree. What do you think? I mean, it doesn't matter. It's already been... Uh, yeah, it's know. been ratified. <laughs> Civil War. I mean, I, uh, I, I, I gotta feel good. If Civil War was number three, was my number three on my top ten list, so I feel, I feel good about it being <laughs> a number like, four. Yeah, it's number five and four. We're not nominated for Razzies right. here. Yes. Yeah. All right, though. Now we're getting down to the final three. Our final three films are La La Land, Rogue One, or Hell or High Water. Mark Ellis, what do you nominate for the number three spot? I'm a Monster Star Wars fan. It's a huge accomplishment for Rogue One to be in the top five, and I think it deserves number three. I'm nominating Rogue One. Uh, and I'm I'm going to vote yes for that. I believe Rogue One into the number three. I'm going to vote no. Okay, no. Only, only one of these is in my top ten. Um, <laughs> so I, I think Rogue One should be higher. All right, so you're going to vote no. no. I'm going to say yes. For All right, so three. it's ratified, so... Star Wars Rogue One gets our number three spot. So we have number five is Sing Street. Number four, Civil War. Number three, Rogue One. We are down now to La La Land and Hell or High Water. Whew. Instead, now, all we're going to do now is all five of us are going to write down what we think <laughs> should be the number one movie. Oh, boy. What should be the number I already totally wrote out all five movie. of my, my list, and so far I'm right, so I'm not going to have to touch anything. All right, so, Schnepp, what do you rank as your number one movie? Hell or High Water. Hell or High Water one. gets one number one vote. It needs two more. <laughs> I saw La La Land, so I think that's La La get Land it. gets a number one vote. It needs two more. It only, La La Land just needs one more because I'm voting La La Land for number one. It's all over. It's Damn. over. La La Land and Mark Ellis <laughs> <Ellison laughs> four across the board. So, <laughs> we have couple? finalized... <laughs> Our top five list for 2016. It's tough when you've got to get consensus. Yeah, right. I love so it. The one we have come down to is number five, Sing Street. Number four, Civil War. Number three, Rogue One. Number two, uh, Hell or High Water. And our number one film of the year is La La Land. I'm still kind of heartbroken. Hacksaw Ridge didn't get on there. But that's all right. And an arrival didn't get on there. Yeah. Some broken hearts. This is what makes it tough when you guys I didn't even get to vote for the Neon Demon. That was on mine. I was like, no one's yeah, going to vote. Neon for that. Demon. Can I, tell you, yeah. can I spoil or tell you what would have happened? Yeah, I kind of <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, listen. We, that ran over time. We're almost out of time. So we're going to bypass a bunch of the mailbag questions. We're going to have some more mailbag questions later this week. But we are going to take some of your live Twitter questions because we try to do that every day. Just fire on in questions to at Collider Video on Twitter. Wendy's going to pick a couple out. We'll just take a few here before we end the show. So, Wendy, what have people been tweeting in? The first one comes from Xander Tanigawa, who writes, Between critics and film professors, who do you trust the most when it comes to their opinion about the movies they've watched? Um, I, I go for YouTube people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, me, film critics, because they just all they do is watch movies right. like five, six, seven, eight movies every day. So I would probably go film critic. Now, if I had to pick one of those two to help me make a movie, right. then I'm going for a film professor for sure. 
I am gonna cheat and suck right now and say I can't pick between the two because depending on the professor or the film critic, I, I mean, it's, yep. it's that person's opinion regardless of what their job is. So I can never choose between two groups like that. Yeah, I don't really care either way. I would side towards critics simply because I think that critics have seen more movies that come out in a, any given year than film professors probably have. So they probably have a wider scope of what they've seen and what they can recommend. So I would give the edge to critics. Yeah, if I was writing a script, I would probably want to read up on some professors' theories on film and film right. theory. But if it was generalized, like, oh, am I going to go see uh, Underworld Blood Wars? I'd probably be listening to some critics. So, <laughs> All right, what's next? This next one comes from Jeff Hurst, who writes, With the success of Rogue One, should Disney try standalone movies not about well-known characters like Cat Bane? Mm, no. No, I, I mean, it's I would just... say not yet. I would say let's build up these, these, in, these solo Star Wars movies, no pun intended, a little bit to let us know that we're going to be telling a lot of different tales. But at some point, they are going to have to expand. Yeah from the known universe that we have in Star Wars. There's a lot of hardcore fans that are clamoring for Old Republic movies. There's things set in a totally different time period. We didn't get that with Rogue One. We're not going to get that with Han Solo. But eventually, we should step out of from where the prequels start to where Force Awakens has left us. Yeah, if you look at the Disney movies, like eight years ago, it would have been like, nah, so, but I mean, now... Now you get Doctor it's Strange. Like, yeah, it's like get, eight yeah. years later. So eight years down the road, sure, they can do a lot of stuff with Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Knights of the Old Republic. I want to see right. that as a TV series mm -hmm. so badly. Uh, yeah, I'd love to see them expand, but they haven't done an Obi-Wan movie yet. There's a whole bunch of films that yeah. I think would be fun to see that still use the, the main characters. So. Yeah, me personally, I would want to see that kind of stuff. Not a great business decision. And if Rogue One and Catalyst proved anything, it's that there's great story material on characters we know from the movies that you could that could take place either before a certain movie or after. There's just so many different things with characters that are already there, so might as well. All right, let's take two more. Okay, this next one comes from Alan Reed, who writes, which character would be fitting enough to bring home to mother? <laughs> home to mother? Which uh. character out of what? Any, any like a character oh, from the movie. Bring home to which, mother. Would you want to bring like, to yeah, it's like if you're Mary a rapist person. If, if, yeah. ooh, Mary Poppins. God, that's, good. that's a safe one to bring home. <laughs> if you're looking for a safe, safe <laughs> choice to bring home to mom, yeah. Mary Poppins. I was going to say Boba Fett, but I yeah. guess that's <laughs> I was going to be like Witchblade. Why yeah. not? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say Hannibal Lecter because <laughs> I'm looking at mother as in the psycho mother. Who is Norman Bates going to bring home to impress his mom with? Hannibal Lecter's the answer. Although I can promise you this. If a girl brings home Hannibal Lecter, he would be really impressive. Mom would be like, he he's would. a classy man. For I like while. him. And he's For smart. A while. That's yeah. great. You know, so that's actually not a bad call. <laughs> what was in that casserole? <laughs> <laughs> this is a tough decision. Considering La La Land is at the top of that chart. I'm going to say some Ryan Gosling because he can play some jazz and he's awesome. And An just irresponsible, out-of-work jazz musician. Yeah, great. Every mom would love that. Every mom My would love that. My mom would get that. over it, I'm sure. But he's charming and good-looking. Thank you. But he is charming and good-looking, so he's got that going for him. Okay, last question of the day. All right, last one comes from Rocky Drago66, who writes, Valerian and Dunkirk are both opening on the same weekend. Which wins that weekend? Dunkirk is going to crush it. Yeah. Like, I'm not just talking about which quality of the movie. I'm... That they put that first, it was a bad first trailer. And I'm not hearing much buzz out of that first trailer. I'm fascinated by the movie. I, I am. I just did not like that first trailer. I didn't think it was very good at all. And so there's nothing about it that I found particularly interesting or appealing. There's some very cool trippy visuals, but unbalanced visuals right. at the same time. But Dunkirk, like... Like the the World War story, you got uh, you got uh, Christopher Nolan directing it. You got an incredible cast in it. It's going to crush it at the box office that weekend. Yeah, yeah it seems like that's going to happen. <laughs> the yeah. answer is definitely Dunkirk, but don't knock Valerian just yet because I saw that footage that uh, Luke Besson screened at Comic Con this summer and. It was better than the trailer. It was just well cut, and it's nice to see certain scenes actually live and breathe and see the characters in the world he created. So I'm holding out hope for that one. War movies, even well-received war movies, don't always open huge at the box office. It's more of a trickling effect, but with the name like Christopher Nolan, that's going to have so much buzz around it opening, and it's less of a commentary on Valerian. I think more just Dunkirk is going to be a monster. Yeah. All right, guys, that'll do it for us for this installment of the Movie Talk. Thanks so much for joining us. I want to thank the people sitting at the table with me, starting over there, Mr. John Schnepp. Schnepp, where can people find you online? You guys can find me and Quato at Instagram and Facebook, <laughs> just at John Schnepp. And later today on Heroes, Quato will be joining me. 
Sitting right beside me, Mr. Jeremy Johns. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jeremy Johns, uh, Facebook at Real Jeremy Johns. Oh, and YouTube at Jeremy Johns. That's the important one. I should probably plug that one. <laughs> and right over here, Perry Nemiroff. Perry, where can you, you find you? You guys can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at P. Nemiroff. Collider Nightmares every Wednesday morning and best of the week every Saturday. And Mr. Mark Ellis. Uh, when I'm in town, you can find me on the Schmoes No Live show. When I'm not, I'm probably telling jokes like I am this weekend at the Omaha Funny Bun. I'll be there Thursday through Sunday. You can get tickets at MarkEllisLive.com. And next week, I'll announce the rest of my tour dates for this year. Sitting way over there, we got Ashley Mova. Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Ashley Mova. Happy Tuesday, guys. And Wendy Lee. On YouTube at the Movie Couples channel. And on you on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I'm screwing up my own sign off at Wendy Lee Zaney. <laughs> and uh, don't forget, guys, you can follow me on Facebook and on Twitter, Twitter simply at John Cabia. Don't forget... Other shows pop up here on Collider Video every day, including a little bit later today, as John Schnapp mentioned, the brand new episode of Heroes. Yesterday, a brand new TV talk went up. Keep your eyes open for all that stuff. Thanks a lot for joining us, guys. My name is John Campion. Until next time, bye-bye. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.